Walk with me. I think I did it. I think I was able to do it. The smart home experience gets so much better if you're able to uh, divide and conquer. If you can create a smart home pipeline that specifically addresses your needs for a particular room. <sighs> yeah. For those of you that haven't seen the previous videos, let me give you like the background. Whether you're using Home Assistant's chat feature or a local speaker like the Satellite One, you need a pipeline. A pipeline is like a custom package that you get to put together that describes how your smart home device should work. Now here's the strange part. When Pipelines was first introduced into Home Assistant, local devices like the Sat One did not exist. You primarily experienced the flexibility of the pipelines in Home Assistant's chat feature called Assist. But now that we have these local devices, I find myself typically choosing my best pipeline and using that for these devices. But what if there's an advantage to using multiple pipelines? I'm gonna create three different pipelines. I'm going to set up the SAT-1 in each of the different rooms and I'm gonna test it out. I'm gonna see how my family interacts with it. And the idea is that the experience that it gives because it's specialized should be good enough where they don't even realize that Google is missing. Here's the thing though, I don't think that this technique is going to be like the best thing ever, but I do think that for what we have right now, it, it shows a lot of promise. I'll put it that way because I don't want to talk in absolutes because I'm sure someone more clever than me is going to come around and figure out another way of utilizing Home Assistant and all of these smart devices. Or even better yet, what I do anticipate is that for these smart devices, they're going to, the hardware for it is going to be such that it will overcome all of the barriers and the issues that this soft solution is fixing. But I'm gonna talk about that at the end. So you're probably wondering, how does it work? How do you create multiple pipelines or at least get your smart home to uh, split up the work and divide and conquer? To be honest, it's not that hard. If you already have, let's say, the framework in place, if you're starting from scratch, this may seem a bit complicated, but a lot of the stuff I explain uh, in my community, uh, I'll just go over the highlights so you kind of get an understanding as to like what's happening. This is the Satellite One. Out of the box, it connects to Home Assistant, and depending on the agent you use in your pipeline, it can be a powerful smart home assistant. Now, I explained earlier about creating multiple pipelines, but let me give you a bit more detail into this divide and conquer strategy. Each pipeline has three major parts to it. The conversation agent here is the brain. The speech to text converts my speech into text, and text to speech does the reverse. This conversation agent is the brain and can be swapped out for different models, which can give you different results. So I have seven different agents that I can use. A few of these should look familiar to you like ChatGPT and Home Assistant, possibly even Google Generative AI. Since all of my automation logic is in Node-RED, I use a custom plugin that lets me create agents that can connect to Node-RED. Now this sounds much fancier than it is. It's a simple Home Assistant hacks integration that lets me forward messages from Home Assistant to any HTTP endpoint. Now the endpoint of my choice just happens to be Node-RED. Here's the point. Since each pipeline can have a different agent and I can assign each of these pipelines to a different device, this means that each device can talk to a different part of my Node-RED automation logic. I can create a set of logic for the kitchen or the office and even the bedroom. And what's cool about this is because I'm using Node-RED, I can share the actual automation logic between the agents if they have automations in common. If this concept sounds intriguing, cool. You can join the Tech Enthusiast community because there I post pretty frequently and share out of the box ideas like these. And if you become a pro member, you can get access to special hidden spaces where I deep dive these concepts in depth. Now to test my divide and conquer hypothesis, I would ideally like to replace all of the Google devices and see if anyone notices a difference. But there's two big problems with this. Everyone in my home is used to the Google wake word. The other issue is that I am not here to see how well or bad this setup works for my family. So I'm gonna have to improvise. There is this new up and coming smart home enthusiast named Michael Lean, who did a head to head battle with Voice PE, Satellite One, and Lady A from the Smart Home Cartel. Now you can watch that battle for yourself, but I think you can guess who came on top. 
But here's why I'm bringing it up. I'm going to use his test as a benchmark for success. First, I've duplicated his setup using the same pipeline settings. I'm going to replicate a few of the tests, both the ones that passed and failed, to get a control. Next, I will use new pipelines that I've set up and rerun all of the tests from the control. Okay, currently I am using the local generic, which is the one that I set up here, which has all of the things that we see inside the video from Michael Lean. Let's test it out. What time is it? Huh. What time is it? Okay, so it seems like the faster whisper isn't working. Yep, it is freaking out. No worries. So I'm going to change this from faster whisper to home assistant cloud. What time is it? 10.19 p.m. Turn off the office lights. Yep. Turned off the lights. Okay, so I don't expect this next command to work. I'm cold. Would you like me to adjust the temperature for you? Mm, yes. What is the weather forecast for tomorrow? I cannot provide weather forecasts. Play the song Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. Oh, cool. Look at that. It did it. What are some things I can make with avocados, tomatoes, lime juice, garlic, and onions? You can make guacamole or salsa with those ingredients. Okay, so really interesting outcome. Out of the video, some of those, like the last four, were supposed to fail, but two of them did pass. So I'm changing it back to the kitchen assistant. Let's see how it does. Just so you know, this is using my custom kitchen assistant uh, agent. This is connected to Node Red. What time is it? 10.30 p.m. Turn off the office lights. Nice. I'm cold. Yeah, I don't expect this one to work either. What's the weather forecast for tomorrow? The weather forecast for Federal Way, Washington, tomorrow, July 4th, 2025, is partly cloudy. The temperature is expected to be a Play the song Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. Playing Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen on the Office Assistant Sat 1 media player. Yes. What are some things I can make with avocados, tomatoes, lime juice, garlic, and onions? With avocados, tomatoes, lime juice, garlic, and onions, you can make several delicious dishes. Here are a few ideas. This one worked flawlessly. Everything that was supposed to work, worked. Everything that wasn't supposed to work, didn't work. But again, everything was within expectations. So I'm actually really happy with this. I'm also happy that it seems like by default, as the LLMs get better and they start to respond better, le the less my system has to do. Uh, something that you probably can't see is that the system will first reach out to uh, the local LLM, like the local system first. If that doesn't work, then it will try its own logic from within node red so the more that the local environment can work out then the better everything becomes why would i want to do this why would i want to separate everything out why not just have everything just coupled into one pipeline and it just be awesome and to that i say i'm not your daddy do what you want man but if I were to give an answer that you're willing to listen to, uh, it would be this. Essentially, the regular assist pipeline isn't good enough. The agent's within. 
you can use things like uh, ChatGPT, Gemini, or Olama. You have all of these LLMs that you can use with it that will help control your smart home environment. But it's, I find that they're a bit lacking. Like they're good. Don't mind, don't get me wrong. They're good, but they're still lacking. And as a result, there's a lot of uh, gray spots, uh, holes that it just doesn't cover. And what ends up happening is that depending on what you're looking for, like if you run like a head-to-head -head battle, every time, at least for now, it loses. Google, uh, Amazon, all of these other big smart home cartels, they're gonna win. So then how do you beat them at their own game? Essentially, you need to change the rules. You need to change the rules in your favor. And for home assistant or home assistant devices, they're going to have to leverage their unique uh, strength, which is flexibility. By being able to create things that are unique and custom, having things built around that paradigm is going to outclass the smart home cartels every single time. It's essentially a case between a giant that moves slowly and a nimble mouse that can turn quickly. You can't expect the giant to spin and pivot on its foot, but you can expect the mouse to quickly change directions. And that's what Home Assistant is. It's the fast mouse that can change directions really quick. And that flexibility is what we have to leverage. And that's what we're doing with this multi-pipeline system. Isn't it more complicated to create this multi-pipeline system? Answer is yes. I think it is a little bit more complicated. But then again, what part of Home Assistant isn't complicated? When you compare setting up Home Assistant to setting up uh, any of the other smart home cartels, it takes a bit of knowing, right? And then especially when you get into Home Assistant, you're not just going to turn on and off lights. You're like, you're going to do a lot more. Like every one of us that I know that has gone into Home Assistant goes in that rabbit hole and then you create things that are useful and unique to you. But, but I do think that Home Assistant will get to a point where it is as easy as all of the other smart home cartels. Additionally, I do think it's going to get to the point where the things that it can do out of the box will be at the same level as the smart home cartels, assuming that the smart home cartels don't innovate and take things to another level. At some point in the future, I do expect that my techniques will get invalidated, and that's fine. I'm okay with that. But what this does do for you now is that this does allow you to use a lot of these unique local smart home systems without giving up the thing that you like the most. It may also put things into perspective where instead of us looking at the, the, instead of us looking at all the things that Amazon, Google, the smart home cartels, everything that they offer, and for us to try to copy and mimic everything that they're doing, this puts into question whether or not the things that they're coming out with are actually the things that we want, are actually the things that are meaningful to us. So instead, what I expect to see moving forward is instead of us creating uh, these head-to-head -head battles on things that the, what the smart home cartels can do, we're doing it based off of what we want our smart home to do. Therein lies the big difference. This kind of leads me to the point that a lot of the smart home tech that we have now, like the SAT-1, they're only going to get better. And they very well could outpace what we see with the smart home cartel. A good example of this is Brad from Future Proof Homes. I've been following what he's been doing for quite a minute, and I've been pretty excited to see the stuff that he's been coming out with. He came up with the SAT-1. I bought myself uh, a device, and I got an email from his a newsletter list talking about something new that he's coming out with. By the way, this is not like a sponsored or affiliated or anything. This is just me talking about the things that I find interesting. He has this product called Nexus, which basically is like a smart home brain for all of the satellite ones. He showed a really cool demo on his site. Uh, I don't want to mess it up because I feel like I'm not going to do it justice, but here's a quick synopsis. Well, Nexus is a tiny AI computer that runs our custom LLM voice agent. It acts like the central brain of all the satellite one speakers that might be scattered around your home. And when you ask the Satellite One for the weather or to turn on the light or to lock a door, the Nexus AI base station processes that voice request and instructs your smart home hub what to do. And then it sends a response back to the Satellite One speaker. No cloud necessary, no internet connection required. And well, it's probably just better to watch the live demo. Hey Nexus, what time is it and what is today's date? The current time is 2.49 p.m. and today's date is June 17th, 2025. Hey Nexus, can you remind me to get some sleep tomorrow?
You have a reminder to get some sleep tomorrow. Hey, Nexus. Can you search for the song Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen and play it in the loft? The song Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen is now just back. There it is, it's playing. Currently, we have to set up Olama and our own AI infrastructure in order to use it within Home Assistant. Or you can use ChatGPT or Gemini or some of the big box versions. Man, these planes are loud. So instead of having to set up your own or using any of the big smart home cartels versions, the Nexus is your own personal AI for your smart home. At the time of me making this, the product is in beta, I believe. They're looking for beta testers, but I'm gonna get my hands on one. I'm gonna get my hands on one because I do think that this will change the game. This will make the smart home not only smart, but 100% local. If it works the way that I think it's gonna work, oh, this is gonna change everything. I just hope that I can actually build like things on top of it. That would be a dream, but we're not there yet. We're not there yet. And until we get there, I do think that this way of setting up your smart home by dividing and conquering will yield the best results. And technically, even doing it that way, it is future proof in the sense that as long as Home Assistant lets you create multiple pipelines and call them, this will work. Even if hardware gets better, just this this solution gets better along with it. If this is something that you wanna do, uh, check the link in the description. I have a link to the Automation Trilogy, which is basically the foundation to how I made all of this possible. It shows you how to create the framework, the choreographer, all of that stuff, which is what this was based off of and gave me the ability to switch up the pipelines and to call different LLMs or different logic to run different parts of my home based off of the location. So uh, check that out. And if you have any questions, man, just check out the community and DM me, man. All right. Oh yeah, thanks for walking with me. You probably heard of the Automation Gold Standard mantra, but I would like to propose a change to it. Perfect automation should be invisible, never noticed, never seen, only felt. While Home Assistant gives you the power to control lights, locks, and cameras, Node Red lets you build an experience beyond Home Assistant, beyond big tech, beyond limitations. Your only limit will be your imagination, not platforms, brands, equipments, or integrations. Uh, can you create a document to track my workouts? You can call the document Gym Prep and also create a workout routine that targets my back and buys and put it onto a table. You see? Okay, Nabu. Play lo-fi hip hop on the office speakers. Playing lo-fi hip hop on the office speakers. Learn the techniques and every ceiling becomes glass. No more waiting, only doing.